Hello. Welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to make character animation in Blender. Let's get started the lecture. First of all, we need a rigged character. In the previous tutorials, we learned how to rig a character with human meta rig add-on. If you want, you can watch this tutorial before going on. I will share download link of this rigged character in the video description. Let's go to viewport shading drop down menu, click on the matcap tab, and choose the any matcap for studio lighting. Switch the color type to texture. Enable the cavity option, and switch the cavity type to both. So, we can display the character better in the viewport. In order to animate the character, we need to switch to pose mode. Let's switch to pose mode. Firstly, let's hide the sum rig layers. Press N key to open the right panel. Click on the item tab, and go to rig layers section. Disable the face rig layers. We don't need them for now. In the same way, hide the torso tweak layer, fingers detail, left arm tweak, right arm tweak, left leg tweak and right leg tweak layers. So, we can display the rig in the viewport in a simpler way. Now, we are ready to pose the character. For example, let's select the head controller. Press our key, and rotate the the head. We can also rotate the head on the specific axis. For example, in order to rotate the head on the X axis, firstly hit the R key, then hit the X key. In the same way, we can rotate the head on the Y and Z axis. Or, we can press double R key, so, we can rotate the head freely. In order to clear the pose, press Alt R. So, it will reset the pose to the default position. Or, go to Pose menu, Clear Transform, Reset Rotation. Let's select the torso controller. Press G key and move down. To reset this pose, press Alt G this time. Or, go to pose menu, clear transform, reset location. Let's select the index finger controller, press S key, and scale down. To reset this pose, press Alt S. Or, go to Pose Menu, Clear Transform, Reset Scale. There are two ways to control the arms and legs. We can use Forward Kinematics, or Inverse Kinematics. If you want, you can watch the tutorial about Forward and Inverse Kinematics. In order to understand what the difference between Forward and Inverse Kinematics, select the left upper arm Forward Kinematics controller. Set the Inverse and Forward Kinematics switch all the way up to 1. So, the left arm will be controlled completely by forward kinematics. Rotate the upper arm on the Z-axis. As you can see, lower arm and hand bones rotate at the same time. Because, the upper arm bone is parent of the lower arm and hand bones. If we select and rotate the lower arm controller, the hand bone will rotate also. If we rotate the left hand controller, only the left hand bone will rotate. Because there is a hierarchy between the bones, and it is the end of the bone chain. It is the child of other two bones. This is the normal way to control a chain of bones. We call this as forward kinematics. We need to rotate each bone individually, based on parent-child relationship. Let's select these three arm controllers. Press Alt-R and clear the pose. Now, Let's set the inverse and forward kinematic switch all the way down to zero. In this case, forward kinematics will be disabled, and inverse kinematics will be enabled. When we try to rotate the forward kinematics bones, it won't work. Let's select the left hand inverse kinematics bone. Press G key and move it around. As you can see, upper and lower arm bones follow the left hand IK bone. Inverse kinematics automatically adjust the rotation of the other bones. In the same way, we can control the legs with forward or inverse kinematics ways.
let's hide the forward kinematics layers for legs and arms. Because we will control the arms and legs with inverse kinematics. If we select the root controller, we can move whole character. Because this is root bone, and it is parent of the other bones. Let's make a pose randomly. Hit the A key and select All Rig. Go to Pose menu, and copy the pose. The shortcut key is Ctrl C. With the All Rig selected, press Alt G and Alt R to reset the pose to default. Now, go to Pose menu, and paste the pose. The shortcut key is Ctrl V. As you can see, we can copy and paste any pose like this. Now, press Ctrl C and copy the pose. Go to Pose menu, and paste pose flipped. The shortcut key is shift Control v As you can see, it will flip the pose on the x-axis. In the other words, the pose will be mirrored on the x-axis. It is very useful for animating walk and run cycles. Now, it is time to animate poses with keyframes. In order to animate, we need at least two keyframes. In the timeline editor, go to the animation start frame. We can drag the timeline cursor, or we can enter the frame number in this box. Let's set the animation start frame to frame 1. Now, select the any bone we want to animate. Let's select the left foot IK bone. In order to add the first keyframe, right click, and insert keyframe. The shortcut is the I key. In this menu, we can choose different keyframes types. In this example, I will only change the location of the bone. So, I can choose the location keyframe. As you can see, the first keyframe has been added in the timeline editor. Now, we need to change the pose of this bone, and add the second keyframe. Go to the frame you want to add second keyframe. Let's go to frame 30. Press numpad 3 and switch to side view. Hit the G key and move up the bone. Hit the I key and add second location keyframe. Now, Let's add another keyframe. Select the first keyframe, press Shift D and duplicate the keyframe. Drag the keyframe to frame 60 on the timeline editor. When we play the animation, we can see the left foot goes up firstly, then goes back to its first position. We have made a simple animation. Now, let's select the right hand IK bone. At frame 30, Hit the I key, and add location rotation keyframe. Because, we want to move and rotate the bone at the same time. We usually use location and rotation keyframe at character animations. Go to frame 60. Press G key and move the right hand IK bone, and hit the R key to rotate the bone. Then, hit the I key, and add another location rotation keyframe. Go back to frame 1, and play the animation again. If you want to speed up the animation, you can move the keyframes closer each other. Let's select the left foot IK bone, so, we can see the keyframes belong to this bone in the timeline editor. Select the last keyframe, and move the keyframe closer to the second keyframe. When we play the animation, we can see the foot goes up slowly, then goes down fastly. As you can see, we have just added three keyframes. But, Blender has estimated possible location of the foot bone between these three keyframes. Blender has added other keyframes automatically. We call this interpolation. As you have noticed, the foot speeds up gradually, and slow down gradually. There is smooth transition between the keyframes. Because, interpolation mode is set to Bezier defaultly. We can change interpolation mode. To do that, let's switch the timeline editor to graph editor. In the graph editor, we'll see the curves which represent the animation of selected bones. We call this F curves. On the editor, press home key to fit the curves to window. Now, we display only the curves belong to foot IK bone. But, be sure that only selected option is enabled. 
otherwise, you will also see the curves belong to hand IK bone. Let's expand the foot IK bone in the left panel. As you can see, we can choose only three location curves. Because we added only location keyframe for the foot bone. The green curve represents Y location change of the foot bone. The blue curve represents Z location change of the foot bone. The red curve represents X location change of the foot bone. But, we cannot see this curve because the foot bone doesn't have any change on the X axis. Let's select the Z location of the foot IK bone. As you can see, the curve type is Bezier, not linear. So, the foot doesn't move at fixed speed, and transition between the keyframes is smooth. We need to set the interpolation type to linear. To do that, hit the A key and select all curves in keyframes. Click on the key menu, interpolation mode, and choose the interpolation mode to linear. The shortcut is T key. As you can see, the curves has become linear. Let's go to frame 1, hit the spacebar key and play the animation again. So, the foot will move at fixed speed now. Also, transition between the keyframes is sharp now. If we set the interpolation mode to constant, in this case, the bone will remain fixed between the keyframes. At the keyframes, its location will be changed. Let's switch the interpolation mode to Bezier again. We can edit the animation with graph editor. Let's select the Z location curve. Bring the timeline cursor on the frame 30. Hit the G key, and move up the keyframe. As you can see, the foot moves upper. Now, select the Y location curve. Move down the keyframe. You can see the foot Y location is changing now. Let's select the both Y and Z location keyframes, and move the keyframes left side. Press G and X key to move the keyframes horizontally. In this case, the animation will speed up. We can also edit the curves with the handles. Let's select the right hand IK bone. When we expand the hand IK bone in the left panel, we can see both location and rotation curves. Because, we have used location and rotation keyframe type to animate this bone. Let's switch the graph editor to timeline editor again. On the viewport, hit the A key and select the rig completely. On the timeline editor, delete key and delete all keyframes. Another way to add keyframes is, auto keyframing. This will insert the keyframes automatically whenever you pose the character. Let's enable the auto keying option. Select the head bone, go to frame 1 in the timeline editor. Hit the I key and add a location rotation keyframe manually. Then, go to frame 20. Hit the double R key, and rotate the head. As you can see, the second keyframe has been added automatically. In the same way, let's add a couple of keyframes more. Let's play the animation. Cool. This is the easiest way to add keyframe and animate any character. Now, let's make simple walk cycle. The best way to animate any character is to use reference pictures. So, you can copy the poses in the reference picture. You can find lots of reference pictures on the net. There are some key poses in walk cycle. Contact, down, Passing, up and reverse contact poses. Let's make first contact pose. Select the left foot IK bone, press numpad 3 to switch to side view. Enable the move tool in the left panel. Bring the left foot forward little bit on the Y axis. Press R key and rotate the foot little bit. Select the torso, move down on the Z axis so that the heel of the foot touches the ground. 
Select the right foot IK bone, bring right foot back on the Y axis. Select the heel bone, and rotate it so that toe points to forward. Select the torso, and rotate just a little bit. So, the character will lean to forward position. Select the head bone, and rotate it so that the eyes point straight forward. Press numpad 1 to switch to front view. Let's bring the foots closer each other. Select the left foot bone, press N key, and set the X location value to negative 0.03. In the same way, select the right foot bone, and set the X location value to positive 0.03. Now, let's pose the arms. I want to use forward kinematics to control the arms. Disable the arms in verse kinematics, enable the forward kinematics instead of it. Select the left hand FK bone, and switch the IK and FK all the way up to 1. In the same way, select the right FK bone, and switch the IK and FK all the way up to 1. So, I can control the arms with forward kinematics. Let's pose the left arm. Now, select the upper arm, forearm and hand bones. Press Ctrl C to copy the pose. Press Ctrl Shift V and flip the pose to other side. Let's adjust the right arm pose. Select the torso, rotate the torso on the Z-axis slightly. Also, select the chest bone, rotate the bone just a little bit on the Z-axis, opposite direction of the hip bone. This is the first contact pose. Now, let's split the 3D viewport window. Switch the 3D viewport to dupe sheet editor. The dupe sheet editor allows us to edit the keyframes belong to rig in details. We cannot see any keyframes now. Because, we haven't add any keyframes yet. In order to add keyframe, hit the A key and select all bones. Be sure that, timeline cursor is at the first frame. On the 3D viewport, hit the I key, and add location rotation keyframe. On the dupe sheet editor, we can see all keyframes detailed belong to the bones. If we set the keyframe type to location and rotation, we won't have to choose every time. Go to keying menu, and set the active keyframe type to location and rotation. Now, let's make reverse contact pose. With the all bones as selected, press Ctrl C and copy the first contact pose. Go to frame 13. Press Shift Ctrl V, and paste the pose flipped. So, we will get the reverse contact pose. Hit the I key and add another keyframe. On the dupe sheet editor, scroll up the mouse wheel to zoom in, and hold down middle mouse to pan. When we slide the timeline cursor, we can see the character moves between these two keyframes. On the dupe sheet editor, we can see that some bones have yellow line between these two keyframes. It means, Location or rotation of these bones don't change between these keyframes. Now, let's go to frame 7, just middle of these keyframes, and make passing pose. Select the left foot IK bone. Press Alt R to clear the rotation. In the same way, select the right foot IK bone, and clear the rotation. Select the left foot heel bone, and clear the rotation. In the same way, select the right foot heel bone and clear the rotation. Select the right foot IK bone, and move back little bit. Rotate the bone, and move up little bit. Select the torso, and move up just a little bit. Select all bones, Hit the I key to insert new keyframe.
Let's go to frame 4. Select the left foot IK bone, and clear the rotation. Select the torso, and move down little bit. Select the right foot bone, and move out little bit. Select all bones, hit the I key to insert new keyframe. Let's go to frame 10. Select the torso, and move up little bit. Select the right foot IK bone, and rotate the bone. Move out the bone little bit. Select all bones, hit the I key to insert new keyframe. In order to complete one cycle, we need to mirror the poses. To do that, go over the dupe sheet editor, be sure that all keyframes are selected. If not, hit the A key and select all keyframes. They will be highlighted yellow color. Go to frame 13. Press Ctrl C and copy all keyframes. Press Shift Ctrl V and paste the keyframes flipped. There we go. We have one walk cycle now. As you can see, the frame 1 and frame 25 have same keywords and pose. Let's close the dupe sheet editor. Now, we want to make infinite walk cycle. To do this, we can use two methods. Firstly, we can make cycling by copying and pasting the keyframes in the timeline editor. Go over the timeline editor, hit the A key and select all keyframes. Press Ctrl C and copy the keyframes. Go to frame 25. Press Ctrl V and paste the keyframes. As you can see, we have two walk cycles now. In the same way, select all keyframes again, copy the keyframes. Go to the last keyframe, and paste the keyframes. We can extend the cycle as much as we want. Let's delete the other keyframes, and make one cycle again. Another way, we can use cyclic modifier. Be sure that all bones are selected. Let's switch the timeline editor to graph editor. We can see all curves belong to one cycle animation. Go to channel menu, extrapolation mode, and make cyclic. As you can see, the animation curves go to infinity now. Let's play the animation. There we go. Thanks for watching. See you in the next tutorial.